let's look at the quiz 10 try again see how to address these problems so we start off with the honesty question i'm going to abide by these rules yes first question specific heat capacity so it's a specific heat capacity problem of limestone we have a quantity 0 0.909 kilojoules per kilogram celsius this tells us how much energy as heat input is required to raise the temperature of one kilogram of this material one degree celsius so then we're going to give this amount 1809 kilojoules of heat to a known mass of this material and given an initial temperature we want to find out what the final temperature is going to be so our relevant equation for a heat capacity is that the heat input is equal to the amount of stuff in this case we're talking about kilograms so mass times this heat capacity itself times the change in temperature so here q is heat input and this is given as 1809 kilojoules m is our mass of the sample and that's given as 27.1 kilograms c is our specific heat capacity and that's given as 0. 909 kilojoules per kilogram degrees celsius and delta t is for the temperature change what does that mean that means it's the final temperature minus the initial temperature what we're trying to find is what will be the temperature so we're trying to find the final temperature is going to equal to the initial temperature plus the change which also makes sense this says that if we can find the temperature change we can find the final temperature if we're going to find the temperature change delta t that means we need to solve this for temperature or at least for temperature change so delta t we divide both sides by mc we get q over mc okay so let's do that first so q is 1809 kilojoules m is 27.1 kilograms and 0 0.909 kilojoules per kilogram celsius our units we hope will work out so let's check kilojoules in the numerator kilojoules in the denominator kilograms kilograms so the only thing that is left is celsius degrees celsius in the denominator of the denominator which means they're in the numerator and that's fine because we're going to get a temperature change in celsius that's good that's just what we want so in terms of the numbers we have 1809 divided by the product of 27.1 and 0.909 and i get 73.44 degrees celsius we're not done we want the final temperature so t final equals t initial which is 29.0 c plus the temperature change 73.44 c and i get 102.4 and given to two significant figures only 102 is really uh, good enough to keep question three vibranium so we told it's a metal it has a heat input of 82.2 joules we have a mass of 18.06 grams we have a temperature change of 20.2 celsius we're also told that there's a relationship of a molar heat capacity as 25 joules per mole celsius this tells us that if you add 25 joules to a mole of metal its temperature is going to go up by one degree celsius if you have more moles of metal it'll take more joules to raise the same temperature it's asking us how many moles of vibranium in their sample so we're going to use the molar heat capacity for that and the mass of the sample which is given here is 18 grams isn't going to help us in answering this problem so we have our molar heat capacity now and so our equation is not going to be that the heat input is going to be the number of moles that's n not mass moles times c because then it's the moles that are going to cancel out for the amount times delta t so what do we have we have q a heat input is 82.2 joules we have an n is trying to find c is given and delta t is given as 20.2 celsius so we want to find n so we're going to get n equals q over c delta t units joules celsius we're left with moles in the denominator of the denominator which is to give us moles and that's exactly what we want and where we want it so in terms of our numbers 82.2 divided by the product of 25 times 20.2 so 0 0.163 moles of vibranium are in this sample 
0 0.163. Now I have a sulfate reducing bacteria question. These are interesting critters, um, all sorts of cool things that they do. They're often found in saline environments because sulfates are often found with brines and seawater and other salty type solutions. And so if you have an anoxic saline environment, sulfate reducing bacteria have a way to make a living. First thing here we want to find out if this equation is balanced. So let's take a look at it. Keep in mind here that subscripts and things like that aren't formatting properly, but we know what this is supposed to be. So to see if this is a balanced equation, all that needs to happen is that we have all the same number and identity of atoms on one side, the reactant side, as on the other side, the product side. So let's count up atoms of different types on the reactant and product sides. So for the carbon on the left, we have one. Carbon on the right, we have just one. For hydrogen on the left, we have four. And then none, no more hydrogens here. On the right, we have one plus one plus two. If that fits, sodium. Here we have two. On the right-hand side, we have one, two. Then sulfur, we have only one on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, again, we have only one. Oxygen, on the left-hand side, we place four of them in the sulfate. On the right-hand side, we have three of them in the carbonate plus one in the water. So if they're all the same on both sides, and they are, then this equation is balanced. So using this balanced equation above, we're trying to find the molar enthalpy of this reaction. And to find the molar enthalpy from the enthalpies of formation, the heat of the reaction is going to be equal to the sum of the delta H's of the products minus the sum of the delta H of the reactants. So the delta H is the reactants, that's the CH4, the methane, and the sodium sulfate. So that's minus 74.81 kilojoules per mole, obviously, minus 13. 89.61, so I'm getting 1464.42 kilojoules per mole. And the delta H of the products, I have three to add together, the sodium bicarbonate, the sodium hydrogen sulfide, and the water. So for our delta H the reaction now, we're going to have the delta H of the products, that's minus 1394.47 minus the delta H of the products, which is minus, so that's going to be plus 1464. And so we're going to get a positive number, positive 69.95 kilojoules per mole. So 69.95 is the consumption of methane by sulfate reduction. So that's the reaction given above. Endothermic or exothermic? So let's see, endothermic means that it absorbs heat from the surroundings. Exothermic means that it transfers heat to the surroundings. What we calculated for the reaction enthalpy was the heat in returning the reaction back to room temperature, which is positive if it's an addition of energy to the system and negative if it's a flow of energy out from the system. So we got a positive 69.95. That means that it is endothermic. Question seven, how many kilojoules of heat would be absorbed if sulfate reducing bacteria consume 1,112 grams of methane in this reaction? So we're gonna do this reaction uh, and it's telling us how many grams we want. So what we need is how many moles we have. If we have a number of moles, then we, all we have to do is multiply it by the molar enthalpy. So we're gonna to have to find the number of moles of methane to be able to answer this question. So what we need to do to answer this question figure out how many moles we have. We're starting out with 1,112 grams of CH4. We want to get moles of CH4, so we have to figure out the molar mass. The molar mass is going to be of carbon, so that's 12.011, and then four hydrogens plus four times 1.008, and those are all grams per mole. 12.011, plus four times 1.008, we get 16.043 grams in one mole. We're multiplying by one mole per 16.043 grams of CH4. This is all CH4. Give 69.31 moles of CH4. 
So what we need to do is delta H total equals the number of moles times delta H for one mole. So that's 69.31 moles times 69.95 kilojoules per mole. The moles are going to cancel. We'll end up with an answer in kilojoules, which is what we want. So 69.31 times 69.95. I get 48, 48 kilojoules. Negative or positive? Negative number if it gives off heat. Well, we know this is an endothermic reaction. Ooh, it should be an endothermic reaction. Good to catch that. Um, so it's gonna be a positive number. So 48, 48 is what we'll leave it at. And it's kilojoules, so that's right, 48, 48. See what it thinks. I got them all right, um, except for somehow this, this answer here, 102.4, um, it doesn't think is close enough. That should be within the 1% tolerance. So I'm not sure what went wrong there. Maybe I didn't set the, maybe I didn't set the 1% tolerance because this is the proper number. So if that happened to you, let me know so that I can give you the credit. That's the right answer.